All right. One more bout with this piece of junk. It's not a piece of junk. I'm just getting aggravated with it. We replaced everything, of course. Find out later, that little jewel right there is a cheapo aftermarket uh, O2 sensor. Got that one and the uh, Bank 2 off of eBay for 45 bucks. We're thinking that's probably the problem because we've replaced the catalytic converter, replaced the back O2 sensor with a, um, a quality Nipendenzo one, which is almost the identical same thing that the uh, AC Delco one has. <clears throat> and so still getting the P24, uh, P420 code or 0420. So I'm going to replace that one with this one. Dang it. Let go of my sensor. There we go. This, as you see, is an Ipendenzo. O2 sensor. Supposedly in these uh, lure cars you can't put the cheap junk in them and get them to work right. So I forgot what this one cost me. Uh, $63.99 later and only one of the four parts stores in this area had this. All of them, uh, the website for all of them said they had it. But the only one that actually did was Advance. So tonight Advance is the hero. Of course, they didn't have the spark plugs or anything else that I needed for this too. So I'm gonna change your plugs. That's what we're putting in here. If you've never seen these before, these are the most efficient burning plugs that I've ever owned. I've got them in my, my Tahoe right there. Um, I've had two sets of them in my Tahoe and the only reason I had two sets is because I was an idiot and tried to mix a half a tank of E85 with regular gas and think it would run it because I could get the E85 cheaper. Not the case. So these are diamond fire. It actually sparks from the uh, center electrode up to all the different points on this um, spark plug, the resistor or whatever the heck you want to call it, the arcing point. This one doesn't just have one, it's got uh, three or four, I think it's three arcing points. And it puts out a heck of a lot more, um, a heck of a lot more spark, which burns the fuel more efficiently, gives you more power and more fuel economy. So, all the people that are poo-pooing, putting the E3 plugs in, you can go right on poo-pooing them all you want to. I'm on my second set in my Tahoe in, what, 10 years now? And I don't have a single problem for, uh, have a single problem with them. Um, now, why am I so hardcore sold on these? Because that truck doesn't get but 12 miles to the gallon right now. But mostly because it's full of tools. However, if I had standard plugs in there, I'd be getting like eight or eight, maybe ten. If you take the E3 plugs out of that truck right now and put regular or even the iridium flavor spark plugs in there, 
you're gonna it's gonna drop power it's not gonna run worth a flip when I first put the e3 plugs in my Tahoe and pulled out the end of my driveway and stomped it that's the first time that truck ever squalled the tires turned them over of course it's done it a lot since then but that's another story um, anyway I'm gonna try and hopefully not burn myself to death getting that hot I mean, I just got back from the parts store. See, bag, all my junk. Um, but I'm gonna try and get that top O2 sensor out without burning myself to death and get it replaced and we'll have the good one in there now and then I'll get my ratchet and socket and such out and see if we can do something with the uh, spark plugs on this thing too. I don't like changing the spark plugs on these uh, series, well, on any of the 3800s, I don't, because this one's not too bad on the front. Don't like the coil packs, but it, 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 it's whatever. I mean, those wires are not the thickest in the world either. I thought that, yeah, those are AC Delco. So evidently this was serviced at the GM garage but or somebody's really big on sticking with the original equipment parts and this has got to come off so it's not in my way and i'll be down here in the back side of the motor all night it looks like because the, the spark plugs are right there by that o2 sensor so fun stuff i may just wait and do the spark plugs when i can see without having to lean over everything so heavy but get the O2 sensor changed out first that's a start and uh, later on I am I'll be doing another video on uh, changing the cap and rotor and putting in uh, some new wires on that thing because I've had it 10 years right at 10 years and I haven't done that yet. It's still got the wires on it that I bought it with. And they almost look like the, fact, the original factory wires. And this thing's got almost 200,000 miles on it. So, which if you know anything about those GM vehicles, once they get up around the 200,000 mile mark, that's the, the point where they're price drops drastically unless you're a dealer dealers still seem to think they're worth all kinds of gold but i got news for them they're not anyway i'm gonna get at this and uh get this swapped out and see what we can make happen for her towards getting her passed on her emissions i tried the gas cap thing on hers and you know how when i go to test mine i always spray the little um, o-ring inside the gas cap to where it holds suction and passes the uh, evap test yeah this one you can't do that on this one's got a little weird shaped mechanical looking um, cap on it gas cap and there's no seal or it doesn't look like it seals at all it may be inside but anyway let me get at this all right, little update. This car I hate. I really, literally hate the way they put this thing together. These spark plug boots are spring-loaded to help them come off a little easier. There's nothing about these boots that comes off easy. I'm sure they've got a tool that snaps right down on that little ridge it just pops them right out of course they don't sell that tool or if they do it's not a average everyday part or anything that you'd use for anything other than this got one spark plug cannot get a wrench on that O2 sensor I'm actually gonna have to use an actual O2 sensor socket to get that off. 
I put a crescent wrench on it which usually does the trick without fail because of the way that flange is shaped that it's bored into doesn't happen I don't want to damage it just in case something happens to the other one this would be a, an okay backup for a little bit so trying to keep that in some kind of decent shape and not strip out the or not round off the the bolt head or anything like that change that uh, number six spark plug out man what a pain in the butt that was I got two more back here and they're increasingly hard as they go towards the front of the block um, at the number four and the number two spark plug I gotta get off of there and change out yet and that's all the more room I got to actually get in there and pry the thing out and they're in there at an angle too so it's not gonna be a fun trip man what a pain in the neck I mean overall they're not that hard to do but getting those stupid uh, socket ends off or the socket dang it the spark plug wires off is a pain in the neck of course I'm thinking about spraying some uh, either well, probably some electrical um, the dielectric grease down in the, the ends of those I've got some of that somewhere I think it's in the Tahoe got some of that CRC stuff thinking about just putting a little squirt down in the end of each one of these to where they're not so hard to take off in the future because right now they are a pain in the butt to get off but anyway that's the progress O2 sensor is going to have to wait till I can get it back there to Michaels and actually use his socket to take that one off just because of how it's in there and where it's located and of course the guy that put it on did not put any of the uh, um, anesthes on it so it's really stuck in there I got a hold of it with the crescent wrench I'll put the crescent wrench up on the roof um, I got a hold of it with the crescent wrench but even with it tightened all the way down with, uh, on the edges tight crescent wrench wasn't budging it so I imagine that one's going to be a fun one to take back off just because the dude that put it on didn't use the stuff that came with the doggone O2 sensor to keep it from being locked in there and it isn't rusted so that was a brand new sensor on there anyway let me get this thing get these plugs changed at least and I guess we'll do the O2 sensor tomorrow evening and uh, then she should be able to clear all the codes and try testing it again her theory cost me a hundred and hundred and twelve dollars or two hundred and twelve dollars tonight of course that's also including the cap and rotor button for my truck so actually it was more like a hundred and forty seven hundred and forty eight bucks for the Denso O2 sensor and a new set of plugs for her car yeah, E3's going in that's the ones that was in there AC Delco's and as you can see there is not much of a conductor on those at all I mean it's just a little bitty thin pin in there there's no way that's be, that's a, a good spark although it does have a little dimple on the bottom side but yeah I'm, I'm really sure these these are gonna make a huge difference in the way this car runs
anyway let me get back at it I gotta go pick her up after I get all these done so I've got to get it done alright all buttoned back up I know I didn't show the work this time either but it kind of embarrassing how stupid I was on this one so it's just as good I didn't I'm squeaking over here I don't know if that's the power steering pump down, down in there, or the alternator. Hope it's not that water pump. Holy cow. Water pump is right there. But yeah. I got stupid. I undid the dog bones and everything trying to roll the motor forward. Only thing you undo them dog bones for is to push the motor back so you can get to the one hard to get to front one. And that number one spark plug is a pain in the butt to get off. There is no two ways or sugar coating it or anything else. That's just a, a pain. There's, there's, it's ridiculous how they tuck it up under everything, slam it right up against the fan. It's a ticket. something nice and disturbing. I don't know if I'll be able to focus on it or not. See those zip straps around the front end? That's a major cause for concern. I think I'm going to take this back and put it back up on uh, my neighbor's uh, lift uh, if he'll let me. Yeah, it's got a little little lope to it that didn't have before. I'm gonna have to figure out what that's from. Probably don't have one of the wires back on good. Yeah, I'm gonna double check them and I gotta go get her from work. Alright, here goes attempt number two. Didn't have the wrench I needed last night to do this. And yeah, somebody had gotten this, but it wasn't installed. But it was out of the plastic and rewrapped. Now I went over and borrowed, okay, that one works. Borrowed a uh, socket for this from my neighbor. All I gotta do is loosen the other one up, get it where I can take it out by my hand, and pop this one back in it and tighten it down. I think it should be all right. There's the victim.
Now there's the old El Cheapo sensor. Now, because of what I just went through, I cannot stress enough. All right, that's the old one. That's the new one. Other than this one's got holes and that one's got slots, I don't know what the, the big difference is. Plug's the same and everything else is the same. But I had to get really creative with the uh, method of getting it out. Kind of because the guy, my wife got to put that one in because she was too impatient to wait, did not use this little pack of stuff, the anti-seize. And as I said, I cannot stress enough how important using this stuff is especially on those O2 sensors <clears throat> I'm kneading it so I can work that oil that was in the top part back down in here I don't know that it'll help or hurt anything either way but I want to make sure that this will work and that if I ever have to take this upper sensor back off I'll be able to take it off without having to get five different extensions and uh, a breaker bar. Alright, so it looks like it's all kneaded up now. It's nice and consistent all the way through the tube. <clears throat> Let's see how, well, if it'll ever focus. See what I had to use? That's my neighbor's uh, O2 sensor socket. Had to use a kind of universal joint and three 10 inch extensions and a breaker bar to get that stupid sensor right there off. Because the guy that put it on, put it on good and tight. Which wouldn't have been bad if he had used the anti seats Because then it would have come back off a whole lot easier. So, I'm going to slobber, slobber that up with a little bit of anti-seize. And then we're going to stick it back down in the hole down there. And we'll be done. Hopefully this is the last thing we've got to do to this car. To get it to finally go past emissions. Because this is getting on my last nerve. And I know it's getting on my wife's nerve because I have to keep driving her to work so that I can do the work on this thing. Anyway, let's get this stupid thing back together. I'll set you down right here for a second. Now you may not have to really slobber this thing up, but I like to get it all down in the um, the grooves of the threads here. Just a nice even coat all the way around. Hope this light's enough to, to where you can see. I put it in every thread the whole way up and even a little bit on the washer that might not be the smartest idea but hey it works and then I'm just gonna put it down in the back down in the hole there tighten it up by hand first make sure it's started in there straight and I'll put the wrench back on it.
because of the where this thing's located and the angle that it's at. Oh, there it's finally started. It's a pain in the butt to get these things started like this. Now it's all the way down tight. All I need to do is put a, a final twist on it and then plug up the electrical. Now because it's as dark as it is out here, I'm not going to subject y'all to listening to me play uh, night Shade Tree Mechanic at night. Go ahead and uh, finish fastening this sucker up and then I'll do my final thoughts on this. Okay, so final breakdown of my neighbor's O2 socket. My impact universal joint, I guess you call it. Three 10 inch extensions, one of them that had the little wobbly bit on the end, which also helped swivel it around. A 3/8 uh, breaker bar and a 3/8 socket is what it took to get that off. Putting it back on, I could have done it with just the ratchet and the, the socket, but I already had the this whole other deal put together. Um, not sure what to make of this because this has only been in there maybe a month, and it's all credited up like this. But this is one of the little cheapo, yeah, you can see right there, it rounded off a few times. Uh, this is one of the cheapo O2 sensors from eBay. Got this one and the other one for 45 bucks. Basically, we got ripped off because we were being cheap. I guess that's the price you pay when you try and cheap out. Now we know for a fact this is not going to be the Nip and Denso one that's back in the box. And evidently, of course we'll, we'll know here shortly if this is true or not, but according to the forums for the Pontiacs, if you use the cheapos on these newer cars, like this is an 08, and if you use the cheapo O2 sensors, it's not like my 99 Tahoe or my um, 89 Silverado Sport or the 88 4x4. This one doesn't like the cheap replacements. I'm not sure how it knows the difference or what the actual difference is, but that, that's just like the people that swear up and down that um, you can use the regular green antifreeze in General Motors products uh, that are newer than 2000. Well, no, I'll take it back. I think they've been using that since 1990. And you cannot use um, the green coolant in the Vortec motors, period. Every one of them, it tells you right on the cap to use the Dex Cool, which is the red stuff. And that <coughs> little S10 blazer right there. That's what happened with it. It had the green coolant in it. It's a Vortec, 97. Didn't use the, the Dex Cool in it and it cracked the block. Now, it's not the block that cracked because of the not having Dex Cool in it. That one had a gasket failure which caused it to overheat and crack the block. That's got a 4.3 liter V6 in it. They're strong motors. Um, if you guys remember my 2000 Astro van, it also had the 4.3 liter motor in it. And we put Dex Cool in it also. That was my first experience with Dex Cool, in fact. <coughs> um, and it said it right on the cap. 
<clears throat> my Tahoe takes Dex Cool. It's a Vortec. Um, with the Tahoe, I had a, an early learned lesson. I had the truck six months and it started leaking uh, from the gasket on the intake, uh, driver's side, front of the motor. I pulled in at the auto parts store one day. I was going to go in there and uh, get a flush kit, coincidentally enough, for that truck. Pulled in at the parts store and got out, shut everything off, and I'm hearing those little pssss. Pop the hood and the doggone gasket was leaking. It was spewing fluid up into the uh, that little da sound dampening mat under the hood. So that's how um, when I asked my GM mechanic friend about that, he says, "No, that's uh, that's one of those deals where um, you can use the right gaskets." He said, "It doesn't really matter which gasket you use, whether it be the cork or the plastic ones with the rubber um, seals on them. Either one of them will get ate up with that green antifreeze." just over time and you'll have to replace the gaskets but that s10 blazer was a little more extreme it overheated and the guy kept driving it like that and it cracked the the block uh, right above the where the uh, push rods go down in for the valves cracked it wide open at the top of the the block now I've got a block back in it right now that's only got 93,000 miles on it built the motor back up from the bare block I mean that's I brought it up here that's all I had in it but <clears throat> anyway get this back to my neighbor put these things back in my toolbox and I'll be good to go For those of you that aren't aware, um, your OBD2 port usually looks like so, and it's either to the right of the driver's steering wheel or right under it, typically. It's like over here, or in this case right there. Now, those of you that have watched my channel any amount of time at all know what this is. The code reader. And after five years, well no, seven years, no it was five, um, I did actually unhook my little band that I had on this. Code reader plugs up just like so. Gotta get, gotta get the keys. Keys in the ignition. Turn it on, it's already on read code, so we hit enter, working, okay, now, P0306, P3, P0306, cylinder 6 misfire. I'll tell you straight, I hate the plug wires that are on this car. Don't really have the money to do it right now because I'm trying to save up for another truck. But if she comes up with it and wants to buy them on her own, 
we're going to swap out these plug wires because they they're supposed to snap when it goes over the the um, end of the plug and the number six one did not snap last night and the number one wire broke in the uh, inside and I couldn't figure it out until I actually pulled the plug wire apart and I just rebuilt it now it runs smooth as silk there's the the code that we've been fighting this whole time that's the only thing from having this car emissions testable and roadworthy P0420 now my wife's suspicion is that that upper bank O2 sensor being the, the crappy one actually uh, kept it from testing out properly so we went and spent the fifty or sixty dollars for the actually I think it was sixty five for the upper one that I spent last night okay three zero zero three zero six that's that says code one oh three I was going down P zero four two zero and another P zero four two zero so then we hit the erase button. It says working. Three codes found. You sure you want to erase them all? Yes. Working again while it's communicating with this slow computer. Okay, enter to continue. Read the codes again just for giggles. Should come back with no codes this time pass no codes okay now comes the fun part of having to run this through all its monitors out on the road plug the code reader And I'll update you at the uh, I'll update you at the end of the video here with uh, whether we finally got it to pass or not. I changed the plugs, put brand new E3 plugs in, which did make a huge difference. Um, it runs noticeably more powerful and more smooth now way more smooth than it did before nice steady hum there's no missing ticking popping of course there is that little squeak from the I believe it's just the belt that needs replaced on this thing the um, accessory belt the serpentine and uh, we'll work on that. I'll put some belt dressing on it first and see if that works because it's not cracked and it doesn't look like it's that old. So anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for now. And uh, like I said, we'll get the get this thing to run in its tests and make sure it passes through all its monitors and everything and we should be good to go. Now my Tahoe I've still got to put the cap, rotor button, and uh, plug wires on it. I'm taking it slow. I'm going one vehicle at a time, one per day. That way I don't burn out on this crap again. And then uh, that'll be that. But I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you for watching.